I'm always taking it late in my backhand corner and I don't know how to take it earlier. Do you ever feel like that too? Well, we have a solution for you. A round the head, jump out, smash. And in this video, we're going to teach you how to play it. This can really take your game to the next level. It certainly did for us. It's not easy though, so listen closely to this video and maybe rewatch it if you need to. So, to make this tutorial as easy as possible to follow, we're going to combine the footwork and hitting technique to give you six simple steps. It will be almost impossible for you to go wrong. First, you need to know when you should play this shot. You should do it when your opponent has played a flat lift or clear and you don't have time to get behind the shuttle. Instead, you jump out to intercept the shuttle before it goes too far past you and you have to take it late. And the earlier you can anticipate your opponent's shot, the better, because this is going to make the next steps more effective. Some quick tips to get better at anticipating your opponent's shot are to look at their body positioning and also the position they're in on court. For example, in singles, if you hit a flat, deep clear into your opponent's forehand corner, then a likely shot from them is a flat, straight clear, so you can jump out and intercept this. Another example in doubles is where you drop from your forehand corner to this area here, where the natural shot for your opponent is to try and whip the shuttle flat cross court. But this is actually the shot you're waiting for and you jump out. Knowing when to play this shot and how to set it up is very important. And so is step two, the split step. As soon as you anticipate the shot up here, you should be doing the split step down here. The split step is done to both get your feet in line with the direction you're going to move in and also to help you push off. And unlike the forehand jump out, where you can do a directional or side-by-side -side split step, the most common split step for this jump out smash is doing it side-by-side. -side. A common mistake we see that limits people's ability to push off from their split step is either having their legs too straight or too close together. Instead, your legs should be bent with your feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart. As soon as you see your opponent has hit a flat lift that you can jump out to, you then need to get into the right position, which brings us on to step three. After your split step, you need to look up at the shuttle and instantly assess how far away it is. And depending on this answer, there are two options. Option one is to simply jump straight away. And this is used when you can reach a shuttle in one jump. Option two is where you do a chasse, then jump. And this is used when you're further away from the shuttle. This option is much more common in doubles. I'm gonna explain why in step six. For most people, adding this chasse will be able to take you from the centre line to the tram line. It's probably beyond most of our physical limits to be able to cover any more distance than this. But for fun, let's show you the distance world number one Zheng Ziwei covered when we played him. That is some serious strength. The important thing is to be confident in your decision to commit to the jump out. And if you do get it slightly wrong, you can hopefully still clear it out and reset the rally, which is probably still better than taking a backhand. Okay, so far we have the split step and then moving into the right position. And if you're new to this, we'd actually recommend practicing this footwork first without a shuttle before moving on to the next steps. You can do this by counting one, two for option one like this. One, two. Or by counting one, two, three for option two like this. One, two, three. So once you've jumped up, what should you do next? Well, this is step four, which is what you should do from the moment you push off until the moment you begin your swing. This step is really important because it enables you to have a fast racket head speed, which really is the ultimate goal when trying to create a powerful smash. So as soon as you're pushing off to jump, you need to do four things. Firstly, you need to keep your hips square to the net because unlike most shots, you don't rotate. I'll repeat that, you don't rotate. This is because you simply don't have the time. Secondly, you need to bring your racket arm up with your elbow back, which helps to open up your shoulders and chest. The further you can get your elbow back whilst keeping your hips square, the more distance you have to create a fast racket swing speed and therefore increase your power. This is actually a common mistake a lot of people make. Don't try to go straight to the shuttle with your racket. You need to wait as this will help with the next step. Thirdly, you need to make sure you're in a loose forehand grip and being loose until the last second is important because it means you can create extra speed in the racket. Remember, extra racket speed equals extra power, which is what we all want, right? And fourth, whilst you're bringing your racket arm up, you also need to bring your non-racket arm up and out to the side of you. This not only helps your balance, but also, as you're keeping your hips square, if your non-racket arm is forwards, like it should be for most overhead shots, then your chest will be too closed, which massively reduces your swing speed. 
or you'll have to rotate your hips, which will completely ruin your timing. Okay, let's move on to step five, the smash. Firstly, you need to remember that your hips stay square to the net throughout the entire movement. Now, it's quite difficult for us to say exactly when you should initiate this swing, because it really depends on how tall you are, your reach, and the height of the lift. But the following sequence should be the same. You want to throw your elbow forwards and at the same time bring your non-racket arm down to help generate more force and also allow room for your racket to come through. After your elbow comes through, this quickly slows down with your forearm then coming through and then finally your wrist to hit the shuttle. Two important things here. One is the forearm rotation. If you put your arm straight out like this, you can actually rotate your forearm in two different ways. Like this, with just the bottom half rotating, or like this with the whole of it rotating, which is actually the rotation we need for the smash. And two, it's not just the wrist that creates power, which many people think. It's all of these small movements quickly combined together. Next, as you strike the shuttle, you want to have your arm almost straight, but not completely locked out. This is similar to a punch in boxing. You wouldn't want to punch someone with your arm bent like this, but you also wouldn't want to punch someone with your arm completely outstretched, Otherwise, you'll lose your speed and momentum. Instead, it should be like this. You'll also notice from these clips that as you're striking the shuttle, your legs should be quite close together and almost straight. This is for two main reasons. Firstly, similar to a maximal standing jump like this, you bend your legs to help create force to explosively push off and then you naturally straighten them. And secondly, not tucking your legs up will improve the speed of your recovery. And speaking of recovery, let's move on to that now. The recovery for this round the head jump out smash is what a lot of people find most difficult because you actually land on your non-racket leg first. People find it harder because in badminton, you almost always land with your racket leg first, which usually means it's much stronger and more stable. So after you've hit the shuttle, you then need to widen your legs and you land on your non-racket leg with your knee slightly bent to help absorb the landing. You then land on your racket leg, again, with your knee slightly bent. And you don't want a big follow through with your racket, because if you do, it will ruin both your timing and your recovery. Now, how fast you're moving into the jump, along with your leg strength, will also determine your recovery. If you're moving at speed and jumping a long distance, you might need one or even two mini steps to recover. Whereas if you jump from a more static position, or with less distance, then it's likely you can recover without taking any additional steps. And like we mentioned earlier in step three, this is why doubles players can do this chasse movement more often, because they're able to use the jump out smash and apply maximum pressure. And it doesn't matter as much if they fall out of the court afterwards as they have a partner to cover them. Whereas in singles, if you were to do this chasse movement and fall out of the court, then you probably wouldn't be able to get the next shot if your opponent did get it back. Instead, in singles, it's often a better choice to take the shuttle slightly later and do a scissor kick to ensure you recover back into court, as your body weight should be moving forwards after the scissor kick. Of course, we're not saying you shouldn't do this jump out smash in singles, but if you can't do it and land reasonably on balance, then we'd probably recommend not doing it. Now, if you're new to this movement, we'd really recommend practicing it without a shuttle first to not only get it ingrained into your muscle memory, but also give you the confidence to know that you can do it well and do it safely in a match. When you then add in a shuttle, it will be difficult at first, but keep practicing it and most importantly, practicing it with good technique. If you find you struggle with jumping explosively or having the strength and stability to land, then we'd recommend checking out our weights programs on our website, which are designed specifically for badminton players. There are eight programs plus two circuits and also video demonstrations for every exercise. These are the programs we do to continually improve our own game. So if you want to check them out, we'll include a link in the description below. And that's it for this video. Our stick smash tutorial will be coming very soon. So if you're one of the 76% of people who watch our videos but aren't subscribed, then make sure you jump out, smash that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss that. And we'll hopefully see you on another video very soon.